Okay, everybody, we're going to start my show with a prop. And, of course, you know what that is. It's a damn calendar. Of course, we're getting ready for Oklahoma and Iowa State. Not playing on a Saturday, playing on a Thursday. Rare territory for the Big 12. In fact, the last time that the Sooners played a game on a non-Saturday during the regular season, it was a disaster. Getting killed at Baylor three years ago. And although... We don't suspect that the Sooners are going to lose at Ames, Iowa. Remember, the Cyclones being 1-7, and seven, and obviously out of bowl contention, will treat this game like the postseason. Sooners, better be careful. Isn't it funny how the dimensions of a Thursday night game change when it involves your team? Yeah, and rarely do Bob Stoops' teams play on Thursday. Okay, This will be the shortest preparation time that the Sooners have had in between games um, in his tenure. And he's been there since 1999. Coming off the Kansas game, I know Kansas aren't world beaters, but you still play the game this past Saturday, and five days later, you're going to be playing Iowa State. Now, I was kind of nervous about this pregame show from one perspective, not having enough material to talk about. I mean, let's face it, the Sooners, 6-2, and two, playing Iowa State, 1-7, and seven, and the Sooners are favored by more than 20 points to win and remain undefeated in the Big 12, which right now the Sooners are 5-0 and oh in league play and all alone in first place. Well, didn't think I was going to have enough material to talk about until earlier this week. In fact, real recently when Joe Mixon made off-the-field news again. Of course, we're not going to get into the specifics of what happened two years ago um, when he was suspended for a year after the assault on one Emilia Molitor. Well, this situation, although not as severe, not even close, but still, when you're pretty much on zero tolerance uh, with your team, uh, which Mixon is, you know, he's, he's done what he's, he's been asked to do off the field since that, you know, assault, which, by the way, still hasn't been fully resolved and probably won't be anytime soon. We, already know, we know that Mixon is already in a situation to where any notable mistake that he makes is going to get him in more hot water than it would for the average football player, okay? We're not dogging what Mixon does on the field. On the field, he's an absolute superstar. He's going to play in the NFL, okay? That's academic. But when you are parking, basically, in a service vehicle area, you get a parking ticket for it, and then you rip the ticket and act like an ass in front of the parking attendant, and then that attendant at that point, files a complaint with the university. There's no way that Bob Stoops is going to let this thing just slide by. There's no way he's going to just limit Mixon to running up and down stairs at Gaylord Memorial for punishment. Not to say that he won't have to do that anyway, but remember, Mixon already in some uh, having legality issues with what happened a couple of years ago. Okay, Now you deal with another incident that doesn't make you look good in front of the public. And Mixon has apologized for it, but still, the damage has been done, and Stoops will not play Joe Mixon on Thursday night. And I'm going to beat this like a dead horse, so if you've already heard it, please forgive me now, but it has to be said. Sooners are damn thin at running back already, okay? You know, Rodney Anderson was injured earlier in the year, and that guy's had nothing but an injury-filled career. Who knows if he'll ever play again? And, of course, we already... You know, know about Daniel Brooks um, with injuries as well. So, Maje P. Ryan, the hamstring still isn't ready. Hopefully, he'll be ready to go uh, for the Baylor game, uh, which will be on November the 12th. So, your backfield now is going to consist of only one scholarship uh, tailback, and that is Abdul Adams. Abdul Adams will get the start. He did play against Kansas, did all right, but again, against Kansas, nearly anybody who wears a crimson and cream jersey and a helmet is going to look all right, and sometimes they're going to look like Heisman Trophy winners. That's how bad Kansas is. So who would back up Abdul Adams? Oh, basically a non-scholarship player named Devin Montgomery, who also saw playing time, and I think scored a touchdown against the Jayhawks as well. So instead of the backfield of P. Ryan, Mixon, instead of those two guys and Daniel Brooks backing them up, now you're going to have to rely on Abdul Adams, a freshman, and you're going to have to rely on another youngster, too, in Devin Montgomery. It is against Iowa State, but still you wonder how those guys now 
go from mop time or mop up time to now headliners in the backfield. And like I said, Iowa State will treat this like a postseason game. I know they're not very good. They're one and seven, but at times have been competitive. They certainly were against Baylor. Probably should have won the Baylor game. Could have made an argument that they should have won at Oklahoma State. But the common theme in both games is Iowa State just doesn't have four quarter juices. In other words, if they're if you were comparing this to a uh, sports drink, as far as drinking a sports drink before the game. Iowa State was drinking a generic brand because it got them through the first two or three quarters, but then fourth quarter they ran out of gas. They didn't need a generic sports drink. They needed Gatorade or Powerade or something that allowed them to get across that checkered flag instead of basically limping their way around the final lap of a mile race. And that's how Iowa State looked in those two games because they played well enough, in my opinion, to beat Baylor and Oklahoma State. And the Oklahoma State game, remember, was at uh, Stillwater. But remember, too, Iowa State, you know, I don't think they even scored a touchdown against Texas. And Texas, we know how bad that defense is. But Joe Lanning has not been too bad this year, the Iowa State quarterback. Uh, talking about nine touchdowns and only three interceptions. So that ratio has improved dramatically from last year. Uh, Mike Warren, um, you know, he's going to play in this game. He's had some ankle issues. Not putting up those rushing numbers that we saw a year ago in which he was one of the top rushers in the Big 12, the former Lawton, Oklahoma product, and Mike Warren. Alan Lazard, you definitely have to worry about him if you are the Sooner secondary, which has had so many worries this year. Uh, Lazard, uh, one of those players at the beginning of the year, was a preseason all-conference player. Lazard, he's dangerous. So Iowa State's offense, um, under the direction of the new head coach, uh, Matt Campbell, um, at times can give you some problems. Okay, They, they can. Um, but the you know, reason why they're 1-7 is because, obviously, not as much talent as your average Big 12 team, although they got more talent than Kansas, if that's worth saying anything, but they just are not a fourth, a four quarter type of squad. Okay, the fans will be able to help them, you know, at Jack Trice Stadium on Thursday night. And Iowa State, for some reason, you know, in, in their history in which they've had limited, you know, non um, Saturday home games, which almost every team does, by the way. Uh, they seem to play well. They seem to play really, really well. And if you're looking for a bit of an historical scary fact, I'm not sure if you remember this, but 1984, when the Sooners were number two in the country, Iowa State's first home game in school history at night occurred that year against the Oklahoma Sooners, and Iowa State almost won. The Cyclones nearly pulled off a giant upset, but the Sooners won 12-10. to 10. And the next week, the Sooners, with Troy Aikman, the quarterback, uh, got thumped at Kansas 28-11. to 11. A little bit of history there for you. So that game 32 years ago in Ames, Iowa, uh, the Sooners just about lost that day. And I remember watching that game on ESPN and how the Sooners had to score a late option TD, you know, in which quarterback Danny Bradley was involved. And that was just one of those ugly, ugly games. And when the Sooners, you know, were able to pull it off, you're like, okay, thank God that hell's over. <laughs> but that was, that was a while back. But Iowa State, like I said, is going to be extremely pumped for this game. Emotionally, I don't know where Oklahoma is going to be. Remember, you know, they know that their big stretch of games is coming up pretty soon with Baylor, West Virginia, and Oklahoma State still on the horizon. This is one of those games that if the Sooners, you know, don't treat it like a business trip, if, in other words, if they're thinking ahead, um, they could very well wind up in the ball game the entire way through because we know one thing about football you know, it is a game about talent, but it's also a game, too, based on emotion. And the Sooners could wind up in a little bit of trouble um, if they're not careful. Because remember, your backfield is already thin. Uh, Capri set on the defensive side, the starter, you know, he gets a targeting penalty late in the Kansas game last Saturday. So he's got to miss the first half of this particular game. And of course, you're still banged up front. And, my gosh, Amani Bledsoe um, flunks a performance-enhancing drug test. He's appealing it, but... Right. As of now, he is suspended for a calendar year. Can't come back until uh, November of next year. So that's really um, a shame for uh, the defensive end out of Kansas. Um, as far as Iowa State, as far as injuries, not nearly as thick as Oklahoma. A couple of players they have to um, monitor entering tomorrow night's game from Ames. Uh, Jamal Wilkes, the defensive back, questionable. And the linebacker, uh, Bobby uh, McMillan, ankle injury. Don't know if he'll play um, either. So, final thoughts, by the way, that I have on this game. Look, it is a game about emotion, like I said. So, I would expect Oklahoma, 
Don't be surprised if this game starts off like the Kansas game last week in which the Sooners, winning or losing, could look sluggish on the field. I do expect the difference makers in this game, though, to be the Oklahoma offensive line, which should be um, a great sign for no matter who the running back is. You know, And, and don't forget about Dimitri Flowers either. Don't forget about Dim Dimitri Flowers and also, too, Baker Mayfield, who's number one in the country in the important category of passing efficiency and leads the Big 12 in TDs and completion percentage. Baker Mayfield, they'll need every bit of his leadership in this one. I think the Sooners, it's not a question of if they'll win. I do think they'll win, but don't be surprised if this is not a name your score type game. I'm going to go 35 to 21. I'm going to say 35 21 uh, Sooners win, but I don't think they covered that 20 and a half point spread. Sooners. I think we'll get tested in this game. I don't think emotionally this is a game that they're going to be very high for, but their talent and Baker Mayfield and the passing attack, I think, will prevail. And don't be surprised, too, if D.D. Westbrook does not have a big game because I do think the Iowa State will do everything that they can. They'll double-team him. They'll make sure that he does not beat Iowa State. So, again, that could allow, you know, Abdul Adams and Montgomery to have nice games running the ball. Um one more thing before we sign off, uh, the Oklahoma-Baylor game, if you're curious why you have not seen a kickoff time for that November 12th game from uh, Norman, it's because the TV networks from the Big 12, you know, ABC slash ESPN and Fox slash FS1, they're waiting to see what happens this week in, in terms of the TCU-Baylor game and the Texas-Texas Tech game um, because I would imagine that if Baylor does beat TCU, they will make the um, Oklahoma Baylor game a 2:30 kickoff, but we won't know until um, Sunday. Okay, the Big 12 um, has to make a decision by this Sunday as far as what time the Oklahoma Baylor game will kick off. And I imagine if the Sooners uh, play at 2:30, then they'll make West Virginia at Texas that same day, the 11 o'clock game, and I think it'll be vice versa too. We know it's either going to be 11 a.m. or at 2:30 between Oklahoma and Baylor, we know for sure it's not going to be a primetime game. They won't play that game during uh, – it won't kick off during the evening time. Um, so a little food for thought. Either 11 or 2.30 on uh, the 12th between Oklahoma and uh, Baylor. By the way, the Sooners have moved up in the polls as well. Uh, they are at number um, 11, um, I want to say, in the coaches poll, number 12 in the AP poll, and they're number 14 in the college football playoff. And no – I still don't think Oklahoma has a shot in hell at getting to the college football playoffs. So that right there is a pipe dream. And it will be throughout the entire season unless something of incredible godlike um, characteristics happens. So, but again, don't bank on a playoff for the Sooners. They got to focus on the Big 12, and they definitely have to focus on Iowa State, which will be a 6.30 Oklahoma kickoff time from Ames, Iowa. Boomer Center.